In this episode of The Caffeine Chronicles, I talk with Emma Lucy Shaw, an artist hailing from Coventry, England, who now calls Peru her home. Emma's journey has been an extraordinary one, taking her from the familiar streets of Coventry to the rugged landscapes of Scotland, the icy regions of Lapland and the Norwegian fjords. During our conversation, Emma shared insights into her life in Peru, her artistic journey and the experiences that have shaped her. She talked about the exploration of her ancestral path and how she experienced a brief detour down the New Age rabbit hole and she discusses how she copes with the sometimes overpowering homesickness for a land that has transformed beyond all recognition to her. So join me now on this episode of The Caffeine Chronicles. Today I have the privilege of speaking with another remarkable individual, Emma Lucy Shaw, whose journey in life is a beautiful mix of her ancestral heritage and artistic passion. Emma is originally from Coventry, and she's travelled extensively and eventually found herself on a path that led her to Peru. Yet despite all her travels, she remains deeply rooted in the traditions and customs of her homeland of Albion. And she's an artist and she uses both her cultural roots and the experiences of her new home in Peru. And her work and her attitude are a balance of her identity, belonging and creative exploration. So... Join us as we go into Emma's story and talk about her connection to her ancestral path and her artistic endeavours and the challenges and triumphs of living a life that separates her from her roots. Welcome, Emma, and thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. No problem. And can you just give us a brief introduction to yourself and what you do? Um, I've been on this artist journey for about 11 years now. It's a very shamanic it was started my own healing journey following the shamanic path and what motivated you to move to Peru well I never planned it since a little girl I was always interested in archaeology I used to love Indiana Jones and my dad lived in Saudi Arabia and he told me lots of stories when he stayed with Bedouin Bedouins and stuff and he got permission to see a lot of archaeological sites in the Arabian desert and it just kind of installed this desire to travel, to kind of get out of Coventry and see the world. And I was always fascinated with Peru because I used to be interested in ancient aliens when I was a kid. I kind of matured out out of that, but a lot of the stuff in Peru was calling me. And then my parents, they both died when I was a teenager. And I got to the age of 26 and I felt really stuck. And I'd I'd heard that some of the plants, the hallucinogenic plants in Peru can help you come to terms with death and grief. So it was a mixture of archeology span and interested in the shamanic traditions of Peru. And that's what led me there. How, I know you're very much on your ancestral path and I know you've got a big sort of connection and calling back to England. So how do you stay connected to your ancestral traditions and practices while you're over there? When I was, when I first came, I guess I was pretty detached from that, even though I always had an interest, but I, I think I was a bit lost in the new age and uh, kind of glorifying every other culture apart from my own and very interested in Native American stuff. But it was my time being very far from home, spending time with tribes in the Amazon that I started to like, I'm not Native American, I'm European. Like, why am I far from home? It was when I was staying in a village quite deep in the Amazon, a Shipibo village. And they're a very interesting tribe that work with ayahuasca and their aesthetic is just very psychedelic. Their tapestries, they're, they're very beautiful try but it was when I was staying with them I kind of just had a wake-up call like what why am I so detached from my own roots that I have to come this far to try and feel something and that kind of started to lead me back home and I've been in Peru eight years and it's like a grief I know grief because I became orphan so I understand grief and it's like a similar feeling I have for my homeland so in a way it's like I've I forgot all the bad stuff about the system and everything and it's very alive in me my homeland because I'm detached from it if, if that makes sense. 
Yes, it does, because I, I lived in Italy for 18 months, and that's a two-hour plane journey away from the UK. And for me, that was very difficult. I just thought it was homesickness at first, and it, it didn't subside. It got worse and worse and worse, and it was like a grief for something. Yeah. And um, I was so miserable and depressed. I couldn't function. I just didn't want to be there. And Italy is a beautiful country. You know, you've got the sun, yeah. the food the way of life it, it was a beautiful place to be but I just could not function there and it wasn't so much coming back home to England and the system like you say it goes deeper than that it's the land it's something yeah. in the land that pulls you back and it, it's it's really strong so I do understand what you're saying and for myself a two-hour plane journey was hard enough so I cannot imagine what it's like to feel that literally on the other side of the world. Yeah, it's, and it's very expensive to come back. And I tried to return this year and I think it's going to take me a few goes because I've been out of the system for so long that trying to rent a house, I don't really exist there. And it's like you need it's a lot of paperwork. And it, it was just it's like I came home for the land but then the system there I I I feel suffocated and I couldn't rent I only got a place in London and it's not like my son's life is more wholesome in in the Andes than in London so until I can until it allows me to return to the countryside I'm just gonna wait it out in the Andes because it's very beautiful here and and I have a lot of peace I've been very homesick over the years but since going back for seven months this year, it's like I've made a bit of peace and I've accepted that for now I'm in exile. And it's like my homeland comes out in my art because it's such a fairy tale for me. It's like England has turned into Beatrix Potter land and it, I can channel it out into my creativity. But when I was there trying to like find my feet because I don't have parents, I don't have a family base, I just it's, it's going to take me a, a few goes, I think, because the system is so, that's the reason I left really was because of the system. I didn't plan to leave indefinitely, but then here you can, like I live very, I live in the Andes, you can rent a big house for very cheap, I eat all organic food, I can have a good quality of life here that I, I don't know how to do that back home unless I'm loaded. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. and and actually it leads me on to your next, my next question which I was going to ask you is how does the, all that influence your artistic work how does that come out in your artwork a lot of the British wildlife comes out in my artwork a lot of I just feel like the grief I have it, for my homeland and, and the calling it just all comes out in my creativity and in a way, it's I feel there's a lesson why I'm in exile, why I'm detached from it, because it's very hard to be an artist there. But here I can be an artist, I can sell a painting, and that will cover me for a few months. And I can just go into my art and my roots, even though I'm detached from my roots. It kind of allows me to do that in a strange way. Has your as your journey back here um inspired you to paint any new any new work? I'm going down cave art thing right now. I just wanna because I'm opening that I've got this big property in the Andes I'm gonna turn into an art sanctuary and I'm gonna paint the studio where I'm gonna hold space for people to come and just try and like get out of their mind, go back to the cave. I'm gonna paint it all like upper paleolithic art and I don't know I've gone back to a very archaic place right now with my art and going back home it's like I I left all my paintings that where I was staying in London and I'm like I'm just gonna start again and it's like I've gone back to the cave. <laughs> so right have you now. found that you've come full circle now and you may have found some peace there? I, I found perhaps settle and put some roots down. Well, that's the thing. When I went home, I realized I, I've actually for eight years kind of made some roots in the Andes and I have my son here. And there's quite a few 
others here from the West that are like dis displaced. We're like a tribe here now. We're a small minority, but we're, we get on very well with the Andean people. They quite like us because we, I don't know, gringos, but they say that we're polite and we don't lie and they trust us a lot. And yeah, my, I see my son here and he's just free and he's, it's like the 90s here. Even though everyone has iPhones, it's like it's not as advanced as where the West is. So the woke stuff, any of that, that's not going to come here anytime soon. And I, I just, I do have a bit of peace that, yeah, um, I didn't plan to be this far from home, but I have some peace. I'm quite grateful for it right now. I think when people hear that, the, the woke stuff hasn't arrived there, everybody will be here and they're going there yeah. on the <laughs> exodus. <laughs> yeah. They have the rainbow flag here, but it's the flag of Cusco. So that's it's just the flag of Cusco. It doesn't mean anything else. Right. And what's, what's the life like there? Is it a lot slower? It's really slow. It's very agricultural where I live and they still plow their fields with bull and cart, like plow. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's very peaceful. I mean, it's coming. The, the, the seven years I've been here, when I first came here, there wasn't any coffee shops. You couldn't get really good bread or any Western type thing. But now there's like coffee shops and they're starting to watch Netflix. So it's coming here. It's everywhere. It's global, but it's it's still kind of there's still time here it's not an escape i don't recommend coming to south america to escape because it's it's quite strongly coming here too and there's lithium here there's resources so you can't really escape but it is a lot more peaceful right now Just okay so when you came over to london i believe that you have i got this right you opened an art gallery there or you, you yeah. went in collaboration with an art gallery. Tell us about that. Well, I went to Glastonbury first and then I just, I was there for over a month trying to rent, but not being able to because I didn't have the references. And I was about to give up. I went to visit a friend in London and then it kind of just worked out. I could rent from the private landlord. He's a really nice guy. And it's it was right by Abbey Road Studios. It's a nice part of London. So I, I like open the art gallery there, but it's like every day I went out to London. And it's just like, I didn't, why am I in London? I didn't come back to being London. It's like the most afflicted part of Albion. And um, I did that for a bit, but I, it's not really where I want to be. I want to be in more rural somewhere with the art not in London where everyone's flashy and I don't even think they'll if I explain my art to some of the people there I, I don't even think they'll get it I don't know the thing with living here I live in quite a rural area and even then you still kind of find that you have to live in this parallel on this parallel timeline to everybody else and just kind of put it close the door of your home and just live in your own kind yeah. of world because it is yeah. very um it's quite woke here and um yeah. chaotic and the system yeah. we won't even won't even go there we know what the system's like pretty much mm. how it is in most of the western countries so you just we just have to put ourselves on this alternate timeline and try and shut it out. But I would imagine yeah. in the Andes, um, it's quite vast. So there's lots of yeah. rural places there where you can go and kind of take refuge and be yourself and be alone and be with nature. Yeah. Yeah, I feel very, like, free. And because I'm not Peruvian, I'm not, like, part of the society here. So we're all kind of in a parallel like we're, I'm in a bubble too but it's 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 very free and it's not very expensive and it, it is fast over the mountains it's the Amazon jungle and you can get on a bus and go to the Amazon and or you can just hike around the Andes and there's very mystical ruins and there's also it's quite common knowledge in Peru that Europeans came before like the Spanish 
there's a tribe, the Kalao people from the northern jungles of Peru who were known as like white, a white tribe. And they tested the DNA of the local population. And there's like a 2000 marker going back to the Mediterranean or something. So it, it's quite a magical place, Peru. The history here is very ancient and you have the Inca stuff and every Inca site you have older like megaliths that they've built around and when you go to these megaliths they look like they've mounted at the top there's been some type of catastrophe or something happened and they've been flipped over and they, they're so ancient like they, they feel so old and from just a, a different when the world is very different and um it, it does feel familiar here to me in a way even though I'm not Peruvian and I'm never I, I never feel like I do when I'm walking around the Lake District but still there there is a very strong magic in the Andes that's quite mystical and the Amazon too because I think the Amazon is black earth so it's an overgrown man-made garden and it's full of earthworks very similar to the earthworks in Europe you think there might be some past life connection to Peru for you and that's why you feel Maybe. a sense of connectedness there I did like a past life regression a long time ago when I was like 20 and Peru came up I could see Inca terraces and I didn't even I wasn't thinking much about Peru then and that's where I live now around with these Inca terraces and yeah I feel like this the spirits of this place like grant me refuge where I can fully like channel and get my art out. Whereas when I went back to London, I felt uh, I was either gonna have to go fully into the system and sort my life out. And that means I'm my art will be neglected. And yeah, but it's quite magical here. Yeah, it could be that, like you say, like the spirit of the place, spirits of the place just want you there because you're the type of human that they want in, in that country. Yeah. You know, like a gatekeeper or somebody to look after it because they know you respect it and you bring your artwork there and you're kind of like a magical sort of being yourself. You're quite mystical. So maybe you just fit their, what they want as guardians of that, of that country. Yeah. Well, it feels like it's out of my control yeah. and I'm here. <laughs> so. so what have been your biggest challenges that you faced in trying to stay connected to England and to try and kind of pave a path in Peru as well? Has it been the homesickness? A very homesickness. When I became a mother, um, that was when I, I got quite homesickness. Just I wanted to like go and feed the ducks because they don't really have parks here. It's very different kind of culture and I'm in a more indigenous part of Peru. So they don't they don't have museums or zoos or anything like that, any of the stuff I experienced as a kid. So I got quite very, I found it a bit challenging when I became a, a mother, but then going back, it like gave me peace that, okay, well, my, my son has seen his homeland now. I took him to all the museums. It's it's in him. And okay, there's not much of that here, but he gets to kind of like learn how to power field with my landlord and all these kind of ancient things. And I, I have a lot of peace with it now, but there there is homesickness. Um, it's not as bad now I've been back and come back again. But yeah, it's it's very different culture. It's very different mentality. And they're very, like the Andean people, I really like, they remind me of hobbits. Like they they have their little earth houses made of adobe and they have their gardens where they plant corn and pumpkins and everything. And they like to make beer from corn, chicha beer. And the women they dress, they, their style is, it's, it's like a mixture of when the Spanish first came European colonial style mixed with their indigenous stuff but they kind of look like witches they have top hats and they have jet black hair and braids and um yeah there's things here that kind of 
I feel like the Andean people are kind of allies to my pagan ancestors. And here they still, when it's the winter solstice, which is summertime in Europe, they have Intiwaimi and the whole of Cusco is just, it's for the solstice and they still celebrate it. And they still mark these festivals here, even if they've been Christianized and they're heavily Catholic, they're still very pagan really. And they, and it's been very beautiful even though I've been homesick, but seeing in another people everything that I miss in my own, but it's kind of been comforting in a way. Yeah, that makes sense. So everything that you miss about here and when you came here, you found it wasn't here anymore. It's there, yeah. but when you're there, you feel a bit homesick. So you're kind of stuck between yeah. a rock and a hard place trying to, yeah, I understand that. I understand that. Yeah. So let's let's talk about your work as well. Are there any um, specific projects or collaborations in the pipeline that you're excited about? You did mention earlier about an art retreat that you're planning to do in the new year. Yeah, so my, my landlord um, is this Quechua man and his wife, Sumi. She's from the jungle, very, very sweet. And they're the grandparents of my son. And they, they've built all these houses in this area. And he's rented me this big property it used to be a restaurant and a hotel when I first came and I painted a mural here a long time ago but I'm renting it now it's it's very big and I feel like when I try to leave I feel like I can't leave the Andes until I'm empowered I'm not trying to sound new age or feminist but there's some things I'm still like overcoming to step into my confidence so I can teach art to people and just share this healing journey that I had as an adult that I just started being creative again and I found magic through the creative process and that everyone has that. It, it's not about being the best artist. It's just about tuning into creativity and having a craft, a magical craft. And I want to help give that to other people and so the journey I've been on 11 years, this process of first drawing repetitive patterns and then advancing. And then if you look at the cave art, it's like a similar process. I wanna try and make that into a, a, a retreat basically. So people come and I just get them to create it again through a uh, shamanic kind of, we can paint with our feet we can I'm going to cover canvas all around the wall in the studio so we can paint like we're in a cave and this is my dream I feel like I will find a lot of meaning in life when I start to share these techniques with people so yeah I'm planning to I'm just decorating and doing the house up and then next year I want to host people here for like a week or 10 days and just take them on a shamanic journey because I know we kind of bury creativity in the west and it's not encouraged and then we get to an adult and we it's hard to get it out again but I feel like I I want to help people get it out so in in the meantime before before that happens what advice would you give to budding artists who feel like they're not good enough or they're not creative enough or you know they've been put down by the system or people have told them to go out and get a proper job what advice would you give to those creatives just, out there who are just starting on the path just keep going and if you look at it and it doesn't like the lines look shaky just don't give up just keep going because it's it's not about being like it takes a while to become a great artist. I don't, I'm not even where I want to be. Like in my head, I have these masterpieces and technically I'm not there yet, but don't give up. It's a process and just keep going. And it's about how it feels. And even if it's stressful at first, like you feel it's not good enough, just, just breathe into your heart, just breathe like meditation and just keep just keep going just keep getting it out whatever it looks like and just keep and the more you just keep you you find discipline and you keep doing it the more you'll start to become happy with it and you'll you'll get past the initial kind of uh bits and who's inspired you who inspired you on your journey when you were starting out back then I used to like a lot of 
visionary art, but then they're, they're all so woke and annoying. I got very disillusioned by all that, but I guess I like Alan Moore, who's the comic artist. I remember a long time ago, I was listening to him talk about how art is magic and magic's literal and it's the arts casting a spell, ancient ancient Egyptian spells, it's, it's spelling, it's the hieroglyphs, it's art, it's creativity and, and his words, I like his comic stuff, I'm not hugely into it, but his words really kind of inspired me to keep going on this path and I guess I'm I'm really inspired I love cave art and I love ochre because I'm not inspired by postmodernity at the point we're at right now and I just I like to look at a lot of images of cave art and just natural colors and that like inspires me I had my whole psychedelic movement phase but then I started to find it very subversive and I, I started to question what I was part of because I feel I had this very life-changing experience with ayahuasca and like hallucinogenic plants that for me just completely restored my creativity and then in the years following because I had such a positive experience from it I got a bit caught up in the psychedelic movement but then as the years passed I was like I do this is I don't this is a bit strange and subversive and some of the I would paint like I'm in Peru so sometimes in the past I was inspired by the indigenous cultures here because it's where I'm living and then I would get lectured about how I can't do that because it's whatever and I just I like to go back to the caves basically still my mind when art was new when it was like a new thing and we were learning to express ourselves through this creative language I think we've all <laughs> fell down a few rabbit holes I fell down the new age rabbit hole a few years ago um and yeah. I, think you, I think you need to go down there so that yeah. you can come out and know what to avoid yeah and um, go on on your pagan journey on your ancestral journey knowing all the pitfalls and what to avoid and what to what to take on so yeah yeah. Haven't been on the um, psychedelic, didn't go on the psychedelic journey, but I did fall down that new age, happy, clappy sort of rabbit hole. Yeah. And I, I got out pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I was there a few years and then I started realising that, OK, some of these ayahuasca shamans are like the worst type of people, <clears throat> like the most narcissistic. Not all of them. There's some some lovely people that work with that, but. It, it started to look like a bit of a freak show and I did a psychedelic convention in LA and it was just, I was just like, what am I doing here? Everyone had plastic surgery, but they were dressed in like indigenous clothing and it, I was, yeah, I was just like, I don't, I'm not sure about this. And it just felt like it's just, we take stuff from everywhere that feels good and there's no roots. And it denies um, the reality that life is suffering also. And sometimes you can have uh, negative emotions, like you can't always be one love, hippy dippy. And, and so I I found it really uh, quite silly in the end. And I live in a very, like probably one of the most new age places in the world <laughs> because there's ayahuasca retreats everywhere here. There's just retreats everywhere. There's a lot of these types of gurus and, and stuff. And I, I had to start making comedy in the end. I created a character, Eagle Feather Flower Heart, just to help me fend being like around this world. <laughs> but even if there's like this freak show and circus, there are also genuine people seeking something that you meet on this path. It's true. And um, it does attract a lot of damaged people uh narcissistic people very nice people as well but you've got to do a lot of um searching and you've got to be careful because you can be so dragged so far into it before you start to think what is what what's going on this isn't right this doesn't feel right to me and then you find that you're quite far into it then and it's you want to get out of it and you want to pull you back in and 
you know how it is they, they don't take yeah. very kindly to it when you don't want anything more to do with it so yeah, yeah. I've been there I've been there please just for finally just can you let people know where they can find you and also what I'd like to do on this if it's okay with you if you would send me um some images of your artwork your favorite artwork I'm going to put it on the screen so that people can okay. like a bit of a gallery and I'll just put some nice music on and um, people yeah. can have a look um, tell us where people can find you where they can buy your art how to contact you if they want to book on to your artistic retreats next year so i have a website emmalucyshaw.com and that has the shop on it and then on there will be my retreats i have to update it but that all the retreat stuff will be on there and you can buy artwork on there or you can follow me on facebook instagram i have my telegram when I was like really ranty, but I can't do the ranty politics stuff because it I find it it destroys my creative fire. <laughs> Obviously, was a bit like it forced you to be involved with politics in the world situation. But I I just I'm not ranting so much on Telegram anymore. It's just my art, or I, yeah yeah that's it. EmmaLucyShaw.com okay that's great where can they buy your art can they buy your art from the website or do you have you yeah, got a yeah. store on there as well shop yeah. right and where's the art gallery that they can find your work if they want to go visit in london oh that's not running right now if i go back i can reopen it ah. so yeah oh, okay. I, I want to be able to come back next summer i have a friend ryan mckenna in scotland who does sacred scotland tours and I would like to go on that tour. I would like to, I feel like these retreats, eventually I can move them to Europe. That's my dream, but I'm going to start them here. Lovely. So you, you may be able to use these retreats to fund you to come back to Europe. Yeah, that's, it's, 
it's my dream it's what I want to do and then I feel like I feel once I step into that power of like teaching art and being confident in that that will allow me a way to come back to my homeland where I don't have to go full on into the system I can yeah. be kind of independent you're quite nomadic aren't you I like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's quite like a free spirit it's really yeah I like that that's great I do remember your character that you did um with yeah, the I need to do more I offended a lot of people in the valley there was there's one woman in particular it, it's not her but it, it kind of is heavily inspired by her because she charges people for like magic mushroom ceremonies and then she just channels the Palladian star seeds but it's just a load of bollocks <laughs> and, like, kind of, yeah I need to do some new ones it helps me like I don't hate everyone in the new age there's some good people there but it's it's a bit silly it's quite good for comedy it is it's a funny mindset isn't it it's just it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of weird it's yeah, it's very strange. Because they have the ancestral path on the pagan path on the solitary path. It's uh, much more peaceful. So thank you for joining us. And uh, that was really interesting. And thanks for the advice for the new artists. And also just for telling us about your journey and um, life in Peru. I'm sure a lot, there's a lot of people out there that live in foreign countries who are struggling with homesickness and it is it's a real it's a real thing and it is like like you say it's like grieving so thanks for going into that thank you for having me I watch you and Thomas every Sunday while I paint oh really oh that's lovely to know right okay I'll give you a shout out on the next show I look forward to that yeah (laughs) thank you for that I really appreciate it